Well, hello friends and happy 4th of July weekend in 2020. Every year we lift up a special offering, a concert, giving thanks to God for our nation. We call it Of Thee I Sing. Well, this year is different. So welcome to your Of Thee I Sing online celebration. We call it the birthday of our nation. 244 years ago, the Continental Congress debated and approved its resolve to separate from Great Britain. Two days later, on the 4th of July, Thomas Jefferson presented the Declaration of Independence. It was approved and published. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. You know those words. You and I in 2020 are blessed to live as part of the greatest experiment in democracy and freedom ever attempted on the face of the earth. Government, deriving its power from the consent of the governed. Jefferson's own enlightenment optimism was tempered by strong Christian understanding of sin. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Checks and balances were established to defend the liberties of citizens. The church was set free to worship. Tongues were set free to say what they wish. And a nation was set free to continually improve, to pursue the greatest good for the greatest number. And never on the face of the earth has there been such an experiment where so many could thrive and pursue such good ends. This year our nation faces great challenges and the church with it. Coronavirus and an economic shutdown were, were plenty. And then came racial division and protests revealing deep pain. But this is the 4th of July and we take a minute to give thanks for our nation. What a gift of God is our country. What wisdom and insight formed its foundation? What bravery and ingenuity fill its free people with perseverance and resolve to never stop making things better for all? We have a huge challenge, huge challenges, and we stay humble. We remember the charge in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. With God's help, we will rise to the occasion and move even closer to the just and compassionate society we see modeled in Jesus and move past this unprecedented pandemic and into unprecedented times with Christ. We give thanks to God for our nation and pray with all our hearts to the Lord to lead our nation forward. Happy July 4th. God bless you, your family, and God bless the United States of America. The March King, that's what they call John Philip Sousa, and deservedly so because he wrote 136 beloved marches, but the greatest one of all was Stars and Stripes Forever, which he wrote in 1867. It was so popular that eventually, a century later, uh, as an act of Congress, it was dedicated as the National March for the United States of America. We're going to listen to our very own Rod Gorby, senior organist at First Pres, play this along with Scott Barber.
Colorado Springs is one of the largest military communities in the United States, and we're privileged to be a part of that. When we started Of the I Sing over three decades ago now, it really was dedicated to those men and women who serve in our armed forces. And when we first started, we had over 80 veterans from World War II. Now, not so many, but these concerts are still dedicated to all those who have given so much for our country. We begin with um, an armed forces salute, recognizing all of the different services that uh, our men and women serve in. And then we go through a few pieces that really uh, seek to honor those who have given their all for our country.
I have such an honor to welcome Vonda Barnhart as she comes up to sing for us. Vonda uh, is right at the center of our ministry. She ministers to us Sunday by Sunday. We just love her heart, we love her voice, and uh, she's here to sing for us another soldier's coming home. You know, I, I just have to take a moment and say 
that um, of all the, the lyrics I think that I've been privileged to know within this context, nothing uh, kind of gets me more than assemble the choir, strike up the band, another soldier's coming home. What an image that is. And in a very real way, we all have a moment of coming home, and you can have this, this sense that there's going to be a choir assembled. <laughs> going to strike up the band. It's a good thing to come home. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. When Julia Ward Howe wrote those words in 1861, to a very, very simple little folk melody of the time. She created something that would be memorable for years and years to come. That great hymn, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, has been sung probably more on July 4th than about any piece that I can possibly imagine. We always conclude of the I Sing with this great anthem, and let's enjoy it now.
When we began this concert, our pastor Tim spoke so highly of our country. And I just want to, um, at this moment, remember as we have concluded now the Battle Hymn of the Republic, that we are so privileged to live in our country and all of us are so grateful. So let's lift this uh, beloved country of ours up in prayer now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this country in which we have the privilege of enjoying so many uh, benefits and freedoms which have been won at a, um, at a price and we have sought to honor those who have served us well. Now we ask that uh, in your sovereignty, you would lead us forward as a country. And in these times that uh, are experiencing great distress and difficulty, that you would come in the midst of it all as our Lord. And that um, in your power, you would do what we are unable to do by ourselves, that you would bring peace and that you would reign above all, that we would find our answer in you and in you alone. We love you and we thank you for what you have given us in this country which we love so much. We give it over to you and we do so in Jesus' name. Amen.